Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today I've got a tag for you. I know I should be doing the Sunday Penguin, but I didn't prepare at all. Um, I worked a lot this week, and the last couple days especially, and now I finally have time to film something, and I did not prepare for Sunday. So I'm just going to do this tag, which I had planned on doing, so I already kind of thought about the answers, so it wasn't that tough to do because I already thought about it. So I'm going to do this tag, and this tag is brilliant. This is a tag created by Pax Panic. Pax Panic, one of the greatest channels on YouTube. Certainly one of the best booktube channels you're ever going to see, Pax Panic. She's magnificent and creative and smart and everything good, Pax Panic. And she created this wonderful tag, the Panic Tag, all about our phobias, all about our fears, this tag. And so it's got a few prompts here, all based on a phobia. So let us confront our fears here at Stately Vaughn Manor. Let's see what we got. Okay, the first one is arachnophobia, fear of spiders. Name a book with a ton of characters. So I'm not feeling very imaginative right now, apparently, because I picked a book that you knew I was going to pick. I picked this book, War and Peace. War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. I talk about this book a lot, War and Peace. And so, yeah, I'm talking about it again, all in my quest to get everybody to read this book. Book Blather! Read this book, Book Blather! Book Blather, Dave at Book Blather, he's afraid of big books. He's got a phobia. It's a big ass of phobia. He's afraid of. Wait, no, big ass of phobia is something else. So, anyway, he's, he's afraid of big books, whatever that phobia is. But you should conquer your fear, Dave at Book Blather. Olive wants you to read this book, War and Peace. She told me. She called me. She let me know. War and Peace, it's an awesome book. A lot of characters in this book, though. A lot of, I mean, it's big. A lot of characters in here. Oh, there's a lot. You probably need a chart or something, but no, you don't. It's not that hard. It's good. A lot of characters. War and Peace, it's awesome. Read that book. Class <laughs> We're on number two now. Cholerophobia. Cholerophobia, fear of clowns. Name a book with a ridiculous funny scene. So I can do that. I can name a book with a ridiculous funny scene. I can't tell you the scene though because it would be a spoiler. So, but I can tell you the book. That's this book. This is The Last Argument of Kings by Joe Abercrombie. This is the last book in the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. It's the best book in the trilogy. And it's got some, it's got a couple hilarious moments. There's one moment in particular, which is just, it made me laugh out loud. So as dark as this trilogy is, uh, it's got some hilarious moments in it too. Really entertaining trilogy. The First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. Yeah, and I don't often laugh out loud when I'm reading books, but this series made me do that twice, and one of them was in this one. The Last Argument of Kings. I highly recommend this book. I highly recommend the First Law Trilogy. Uh, and obviously you have to read the other two before you get to this one. But, you know, it'll be a joy because it's so much fun. So the First Law Trilogy, Joe Abercrombie, Last Argument of Kings. It's funny. It made me laugh. There you go. That's number two. Number three, Acrophobia, Fear of Heights. Name a book that changed your view. Your view, not your view. Changed your view. So, yeah, I got a book that changed my view. That would be this book. Desmond Morris's The Naked Ape. Because I read this when I was a little kid. And before that, I had some foolish assumptions, I think, that I had carried around with me. Uh, probably from other things I'd read and seen in life. Uh, that human beings are somehow better than animals in some way. That we are some kind of higher being or something. I had this delusion when I was a kid, and this stripped me of those delusions. And after I read this, it's like, oh, we're just animals. Uh, which is true. We are just animals. And this book, no matter what you might think of it, um... It points out pretty clearly, accurately, that human beings are, in fact, just animals. Primates, great apes. We're just apes. Uh, yeah, so my delusions were shattered one of the many times in my young life when that happened uh, with The Naked Ape by Desmond Morris. 
yeah, it changed my view, this book. So there's that, and my tablet died. Okay, here we go. Tripophobia, tripophobia, fear of holes. I don't think I knew that one. Tripophobia, fear of holes, name a book with a plot hole. So I'm really bad with this kind of thing. And I couldn't think of a plot hole, but there was something that I always kind of wondered about. And it's from The Lord of the Rings, The Lord of the Rings. So here with this book, The Lord of the Rings, there's always something. And you guys who know The Lord of the Rings even better than me, which is I've only read this twice. So you probably know it better than me. A lot of you people who've read this book, explain to me why exactly a hobbit was the best idea for a ring bearer. I mean, the idea is to get the ring to Mordor, to the pit of doom, right, and toss it in. I like Frodo. I'm just saying, wouldn't, so you need somebody who wouldn't be corrupted by the ring, right? So you need an incorruptible ring bearer. And so you need to find a noble ring bearer. And so you should have gotten a dog. I mean, don't you think? I think a dog would have done a better job because you can't corrupt dogs. You just say they could sneak around real good. They could have snuck around a lot of the trouble these guys ran into. They wouldn't be corrupted by the ring because they're noble creatures. And, you know, you should have gotten a dog to do it. I mean, this is Middle Earth. Everybody's talking to animals. Animals are talking to everybody. You go to, you know, they're they're at the table serving people in some people's houses, you know, dogs are, because it's Middle Earth. And so you could have gotten a dog to do this and it would have probably done a better job. And if not a dog, maybe a pigeon. Maybe you could have gotten a pigeon to take the ring and fly it in there and drop it in, the, in, in Mount Doom. Could have just flown right in there and dropped it in. You could have gotten a pigeon, and if a pigeon's too corruptible, get one of those noble eagles to do it. An eagle could have done this job. One of those eagles that are always saving people's asses in Middle Earth. Just give the ring to an eagle. Fly, eagle fly in there, drop it in, fly out. You're good. You're good. I'm just saying, there were other choices. And I don't know why those choices weren't picked, except that, you know, J.R. Tolkien liked hobbits. So it's not really a plot hole. It's just kind of something like, you know what? I, I, I spend too, too much time thinking about this, this stuff. I do. Okay, there we go. Uh, misophobia. Fear of germs. Name a book with the best symptoms infection. Okay, the best symptoms or infection. Uh, obviously, it's this one. Now, this is a great book. Uh, that I haven't been able to find uh, the a Library of America edition of uh, this guy's work, and it's I haven't been able to find a Penguin Classics of it yet. I'm sure it's out there. So this is Feral by Bertrand Rocher. That's not how you pronounce his name, but that's how I say it. Bertrand Rocher, his his book Feral. So there's some sort of infection that makes little kitty cats want to attack people and tear them apart. I know, I know. It's really, it's really a disturbing idea to certain individuals in this household. I know. See, the whole idea of murderous kitty cats is, is really upsetting. And it's a great, It's a great infection and probably the best in all literature. So yeah, Feral by Breton Rocher. Why are you so crazy, huh? Why are you so crazy? I know the whole idea of kitty cats murdering people is very terrifying. You wanna do all the murdering. You wanna murder the people, right? My little friend, little one. There you go, go murder. Go murder the people. She's right back there, man. Looking for people to kill. <sighs> Where were we on? Oh, yeah, we were talking about this magnificent book, this one that caused all the trouble. So that was the one about germs, right? Astrophobia, fear of lightning, thunder. Name a book. 
that hit you hard. Okay, I have a book that hit me hard. And those of you who've watched this dopey channel for a while might be able to guess it because I've mentioned it before for hitting me hard. And that would be this book. This is Saga by the beautifully named Brian K. Vaughn. He's got a great name, that one. Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples uh, wrote this book, Saga. It's a comic book, a graphic novel, if you want to be fancy. So this one hit me hard. And I remember when the first issue of this came out, the first time I started reading this, I'm like, man, this is kind of dumb. You know, these aliens with these tiny little wings, and we're supposed to believe that they could fly with these things. And you've got robots with, like, television sets for their heads. And it's just, it's just so dopey. But, you know, then I got into it, and I was, like, completely emotionally invested. No matter how ridiculous it got, it was really, you really get involved in this damn thing. And then by the end of this, when the tragic thing happens... I was just, I was hit hard by the end of this. This is, this is the compendium, which has the first 54 issues in it. So if you read this as one big book, one, one graphic novel mammoth, if you read it just like that, and you get to this last chapter, man. I needed therapy after reading that. So yeah, that would be the one. Saga. That's a good one. So we're on our last fear now. Enochlophobia. The, the, the best part of this is watching me mispronounce all the phobias. Enochlophobia. Fear of crowds. <laughs> is it enochlophobia? Or any I don't know. Fear of crowds. It's whatever that phobia is. Fear of crowds. Name a book with a place slash group of people you hated. Okay, there's not many people I hate. Um, not many people at all that I hate. But there is one group I hate. And you can find them in this book, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. Yeah, you bet it. You bet. Nazis. Nazis. I hate Nazis. Um... I hate them. I hate Nazis. So yeah, this book is full of Nazis. This is The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. It's a pretty darn good book. It's a long one. It's a big book. Lots of stuff in here. Lots of information. Uh, excellent, excellent work of history. It's a bit out of date in some ways. That is true. But still, excellent. The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich uh, by William L. Schur. Schur. I think. You know I can't pronounce anything. So yeah, this book. Like I said, there's not many groups I hate, but this is, yeah, that's a group I hate. I think I could say that, honestly. So wasn't that fun? That was my dopey version of the panic tag. Pax Panics panic tag. And I don't remember all the folks that she tagged I have no idea. But a lot of people that I would have tagged have already done this, actually. Has has Justin at this Justin done this tag? He only does videos every three or four weeks, so I don't know. But if Justin hasn't done it, I'll tag Justin at this Justin. Because I, you know, he would do a good version. Unless he's already done it, but I don't think so. I don't think I've seen that. I don't know. I'm tired. I'll find out. Okay, guys. I will catch you tomorrow when I talk about something entirely different. Yeah, something entirely different tomorrow. Okay, guys. I. We'll catch you next time.